Okay, so here we want to review our quadratic factorization. Once again, this needs to be a really efficient skill. It's a fundamental for lots of other things. You're not going to be tested explicitly on factorization um, throughout most of the methods course, but it's inherent in so much of what we do. Okay, so when you're faced with a quadratic expression, you know it's a quadratic because the highest power of x is 2. You want to look first of all to identify any common factors. Factor those out if you can, whether they're just numeric factors, whether there's x in common, whatever it might be. Take out common factors. If after that you're only left with two terms in the bracket, you might be finished unless it's a difference of two squares and you could factorise it further. Okay. If however you're left with three terms, you'll be left with either a monic or simple quadratic, so that is 1x squared, not, not negative 1x squared, not 8x squared, just 1x squared. It's a simple factorization. You should be able to write the factorization down in one step. You're looking for factors of the constant term that sum to give the coefficient of x. If it's a non-monic or harder quadratic, that is if the coefficient of x squared is anything other than 1, you're going to need to do the harder um, factorization method. Um, I'll run through that here. I tend to do it in a particular way. It is possible to do um, harder factorization by trial and error. Some people call that the cross method. Please be aware that the cross method is just a way of setting out your trial and error. It is trial and error. So in situations where there aren't many options to trial and error, it's probably the more efficient way. But in situations where there could potentially be lots of options to have to trial and error, um, it's not the most efficient way. So I tend to use a different method um, which involves a step of factorization by grouping, um, which I find works every time. So it's less, it's an easier uh, process to think through in my mind. So we'll go through that. But please don't use the harder factorization method if it's a simple one. Okay, you should be able to write, literally write down the factorization straight away if it's a simple, i.e. monic, i.e. 1x squared quadratic. Okay, now in this set of examples, I'm going to pretty much be signposting to you what kind of quadratic it is and how you're going to need to factorise it. But that's not the reality of things. So you really do need to be able to think through this flowchart. Are there common factors? If yes, take them out. If no, move on. Do I have two terms or three terms? Etc. Okay. All right, so example one, removing the highest common factor. So 6x minus 4x squared. There's a numeric common factor of 2. There's also an x in common. When we take that out, we get left with 3 minus 2x. What's left in the bracket isn't a difference of two squares, and so that's as far as I'm going to be able to go. Part B is an interesting example because actually the common factor here is the bracket. That's common. Let's be clear also about the fact that this is 1 times x plus 1 minus x times x plus 1. So if I take that x plus 1 out as a common factor, and then work out what's left. When I divide this by x plus 1, I'm just going to get left with 1. And when I divide this by x plus 1, we still got that minus, I'm just going to get left with minus x. Okay. And so we get x plus 1, sorry, x plus 1 times 1 minus x. It's actually um, a difference of two squares, but we're not trying to expand it, we're trying to factorise it, so that's it. If you think about it, just to be clear, if you think about it as 1 plus x times 1 minus x, if you were to expand, it is going to be 1 squared minus x squared. But this is expanded and the question is about factorising. So that's it, fully factorised. If we were to expand it, that's what we would get. Okay, so we don't need to go to that point. Factorisation by grouping. And this is for expressions with four terms. Now you won't generally get this as a standalone question, but this is a really important step in the factorization technique I use for harder or non-monic quadratics. So when we're factorizing by grouping, what we're looking at doing is trying to split the four terms into two groups of two and look at individually factorizing. So in the first two terms, we're looking for common factors. X squared's a common factor there, and we take out X minus one. In the second two terms, we look for common factors, and 2 is a common factor there, and we get left with x minus 1. And what then happens here is like what we had in part b above, in example 1b, we've got this common factor of x minus 1. So if we take that out, we're going to be left with x squared plus 2. It's actually a cubic we factorised using grouping. That won't always work, but it does in this instance. Um, second example here, we could try again. Again, it's a cubic common factors in the first two terms is negative x squared 
leaves us with 2x plus 1. In the second two terms, 3 is a common factor. We're again left with 2x plus 1. This works because this bracket ends up being the same. We can go that step further. If the bracket doesn't end up being the same, it's, it's not going to be able to factorize, be factorised using this method. So we take out that 2x plus 1, common factor of that bracket, and then when we've done that, inside the next bracket we're going to be left with negative x squared plus 3. We might choose to write that instead as 2x plus 1 times 3 minus x squared, slightly neater. Example 3, the difference of two squares. So we're looking for this kind of pattern. Is it something squared minus something squared? In which case I can then factorise quite easily. So um, the first example here isn't strictly something squared minus something squared, but we could think about it as it's definitely 3x all squared. We'd have to go into third territory here. And so therefore, actually, technically this doesn't factorise any further. You have to sort of, if you have to go into the realm of thirds, you're really kind of forcing the factorisation. But it would be possible to write this um, in a factorised form as 3x minus root 2 and 3x plus root 2. So you just take the two things that are being squared, they, both, they go in both brackets, with a plus between them in one bracket and a minus between them in the other bracket. Okay, here in the second one, we've got x plus 3 all squared minus, this is 5x all squared. So again, that thing is being squared and that thing is being squared. So when we use our difference of two squares, we're going to have the yellow thing at the start, we're going to have the green thing at the end, and we're going to have a plus in one and a minus in the other. So this would be x plus 3 plus 5x, x plus 3 minus 5x. Now we can't stop at this point because within each of those brackets there's like terms that need to be collected. So we've got x plus 5x there so that's actually 6x plus 3 in that first bracket and then in the second bracket it's going to be x minus 5x so it's going to be negative 4x. I'm going to write it as 3 minus 4x. Now strictly speaking this actually isn't fully factorised because there's still a common factor in this bracket. There's a common factor of 3. So if I take that out I've got 3 times 2x plus 1 times 3 minus 4x. That's fully factorised now. Okay, and then we get into the quadratic trinomial. So it's about identifying simple, i.e. monic versus non-monic. Okay, so this is definitely a simple. At first glance, the rest of them look like they're not simple, they're harder ones, but be careful, sometimes they're simple in disguise. So let's work our way through. So first one is a simple quadratic because it's 1x squared, so immediately we should be able to set up our brackets with just an x at the start of each bracket. Because it's 1x squared, we know the only way that happens if it's x and x. Okay? And then we're simply looking for factors of 44, so two things that multiply to give 44, that sum to give negative 15. So 44 I'm thinking is 11 fours. Um, so if it was negative 11 and negative 4, that would add up to negative 15. And so there's our brackets. So we should be able to write our answer straight down if it is a simple or monic quadratic. Remembering still the first step of our factorisation is to look for common factors. There is a common factor of 3 here. If we take that common factor out, we're going to be left with x squared minus x. Now 3 goes into 120 40 times and into 6 2 times. This is going to be 42. Now what we have in here is a monic or simple quadratic. So we should be able to just factorise that straight away. x and x, factors of negative 42 to add up to negative 1. 42 is 6 sevens. So we're going to need it to be minus 7 and plus 6 for them to add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 42. Please bear in mind a mistake students will make is they'll drop the 3. Okay, Again, it becomes a, if this question was 3x squared minus 3x minus 126 equals 0, we divide both sides of the equation by 3 and we get immediately to this point and we don't need to worry about the 3. But we're not dividing them by 3. We're trying to suggest that this thing is equal to this thing. Okay, and it wouldn't be equal if it didn't if we didn't have the three there. All right, so it's really important that we don't drop the three unnecessarily. It only go, disappears here because what we've done is divided both sides of the equation by three. Here, there's not another side of the equation to divide by three. Okay, so two um, x plus seven x 
to x squared plus 7x plus 6, so there is no common factor there, so I'm going to use my harder quadratic factorization method. So the first thing I do is coefficient of x squared times 6 is times the constant term, so that's 2 times 6 in this instance is positive 12. Then we are looking for factors of positive 12 that add up to positive 7. So in this instance, that's going to be positive 3 and positive 4. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my quadratic that instead of having plus 7x in here, I'm going to split that into two terms using these two values I've just identified here. So I'm going to make it plus 3x and plus 4x, or plus 4x and plus 3x. Now because of the next step, I'm going to choose to write it as plus 4x plus 3x, and then plus 6. Then we're going to be factorising by grouping. So we're going to split it in half and factorise each one separately, which is why I opted to write the 4x first, because I knew it had more common factors with the 2x squared, and 3x second would have good common factors with the 6. So I chose deliberately, but it, you would completely get to the right answer if you put them in the other way around. Okay. Common factors in the first two terms, 2x leaves us with x plus 2. Common factors in the second term, two terms, positive 3. Please make sure there's a plus or a minus here. It's not just 3 times x plus 2. This is not multiplication here. Okay. It's plus 3 times x plus 2. Alright, then the x plus 2 is the common factor. We take the x plus 2 out and we're left with 2x plus 3. Fully factorised. Okay, D, no common factors again. 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20. Factors of 20 that add up to negative, positive 20 that add up to negative 9. This can be negative 4 and negative 5. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite the middle term so it won't be minus 9x anymore, it'll be minus 4x minus 5x and putting them in in that order suits me because the 4 goes nicely with the 2 and the 5 goes nicely with the 10. We're going to split it and group, factorise by grouping. Common factors in the first two terms, 2x, leaves us with x minus 2. Common factors in the second two terms. Now we could say positive 5 but that would leave us with negative x plus 2 and the whole point is we need at this step for these two brackets to be the same. Okay, So I'm not going to take positive 5 out of those brackets, I'm going to take negative 5 out which will leave us with sorry, x minus 2. Now we've got that same bracket, it's the common factor, x minus 2, we take that out, we're left with 2x minus 5. Let's do one more practice of that process. If you're happy, you can stop and go on. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. Factors of negative 40 that add up to positive 6. So I'm thinking about 10 and 4. So if we make it positive 10 and negative 4, that'll add up to positive 6. And then we want to rewrite the um, equation without 6x in it. It's going to instead have plus 10x minus 4x. So it suits me to put them in in that order. Grouping. Common factors in the first two terms, uh, 5x leaves us with x plus 2. Common factors in the second two terms, negative 4 is common, leaves us with x plus 2. x plus 2 is the common factor, we take that out and we get left with 5x minus 4. Making sure also that you're aware that your um, CAS can factorise, so it is menu 3, 2 for factor. You simply write the thing that you're trying to factorise in the brackets, so let's say 5x squared plus 6x minus 8, the example we just did, press enter, that's all you need to do. If it would require going to thirds, like uh, three, example 3a did, so if we had to go into the realm of thirds, if you just did menu 3, 2, and then typed 9x squared minus 2 in there, it wouldn't do anything. If you want to force it to factorise using irrational numbers, i.e. thirds, you put comma x in there and then it will force it into that area. Okay, so a bit of factorisation practice, exercise 3b, just run down questions 1 to left hand side of questions 1 to 10. If you need more practice of any kind of questions, perhaps do another column worth of questions. Um, yeah, again, it's about just um, not just knowing how to do factorisation, but at really giving yourself the practice to make sure that you are really efficient at it. Okay.